What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Simply Walk the Talk. I am your host, Joshua J. Holland. And today, get ready because we've got a lot of things to discuss. It's going to be a deep dive into all things vitamin E and beyond. And today's guest, we have Dr. Barry Tan on the show. He is the world's foremost expert on vitamin E and president of American River Nutrition, a natural health research and development company. On this episode, we're going to talk about the role of vitamin E and how it plays in human longevity and two main nutrients that are derived from the anato plant, tocotrienol and ger gerinol, gerinol. We're going to call that GG, and both of which help with healthy aging and contain anti-inflammation benefits, among many, many others. Welcome to Simply Walk the Talk. Our bodies and minds adapt to what we do most of the time. If you want to change your body and mind, you must change what it is you do most of the time. This podcast explores all things health, wellness, fitness, lifestyle, and biohacking. Stay tuned as we explore various thoughts, methods, and experiences from a multitude of conversations between our interesting guests and experts through many fields of work. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Simply walk the talk. Simply walk the talk. Yeah. Now, Dr. Barry Tan has cracked the human longevity code with his extensive research on vitamin E, his vast research with tocotrienol, and his work with the nutrient GG. Both tocotrienol and GG are derived from South American and Southeast Asian anato plants and have extraordinary health benefits that have the power to increase the life expectancy of cancer patients, reduce inflammation, and much more. Dr. Barry Tan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and hope that this will be a blessing to all as we discuss this topic. Absolutely. Yeah. So before we started recording, um, I got a chance to kind of geek out with you and uh, sort of get my excitement out because, you know, I had listened to you on a podcast before uh, a couple of years ago, and it's what prompted my sort of deeper dive into vitamin E because I would assume like many others, Vitamin E is vitamin E, right? <laughs> but then when I listen to you talk, I'm like, wait a minute, there's so much more to know about vitamin E. So, you know, I, I was happy to be able to have you on and I appreciate your time. Um, and I think we should just kind of first start into your background. Um, you know, just let people know a little bit more about what you do beyond what I mentioned in the in the bio. And then we can just dive into all of the stuff that I talked about in the, in the bio. Wow, thank you. I I started my career as a University of Massachusetts professor in chemistry in the early 80s, and I was studying oil and fat where this vitamin E reside at the time. So I look at them and much of the oil and fat that I looked, they were mostly tocopherol. The, the, the two groups of vitamin E, tocopherol, so the common one, and then tocotrienol, that is less common one. And then earlier on, I found out that they are functions of tocotrienol that differentiate from tocopherol, even though they're both uh, antioxidant. In fact, if the, the savvy audience of your background, if you Google in the 1990s and 2000, most of the work on vitamin E fail like that. So I, I want to uh, disclose this. They fail because they use tocopherol and they, worse, they use synthetic tocopherol and, and, and it didn't work. So I persisted on that and uh, risking that the baby will be thrown out with the bathwater <laughs> during that time. But I persisted on that and found out that the tocotrienol have differentiated function. So for the past 30 years, uh, I've done a lot of research, first in animal study and then in clinical trial. This is exciting. I really want to bear this thing up for your audience to know about. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it's it's... Obviously, I, I would imagine the person that's listening or watching, uh, and, and I would hope that people are watching this because we're going to have a lot of things to refer back to. So even if you're just listening to this, you might, you know, at some later point, go back and watch this video. But let's just talk about the benefits of vitamin E as we age, and let's maybe just start from there. Okay. Now, it uh, 
about uh, uh, 30 years ago, you, we have to do this like in the funnel. We did a lot of test tube study and the test tube study, study suggests that it's good on chronic condition. So that's the first step. And then we started doing animal study. And in animal study, we probably did like 200 animal study. They, they confirm the function of chronic condition. Now you narrow it down further. In the last 10, particularly last 10, 15 years, we started to do clinical trials. Altogether, we have about 20, 25 clinical trials. It's a smaller amount from the 100 of animal study. Of the 20, 25 clinical trials, we have tested people with this lipidemia, which means that the cholesterol, triglyceride high, sugar moderately high like that. Sometimes people call these kind of condition metabolic syndrome. Sometimes they refer to them as insulin resistance. And then we started to study people with pre-diabetes, normal, normal high, and then we study people with diabetes, big group of people, and finally we study people with fatty liver condition. This is very big, about 90 to 100 million people have a, a, a fatty liver condition. The liver is very intolerant to high fat, so we did that. And then similar other study we had was uh, uh, men and women with obesity and also postmenopausal women with uh, osteopenia, which means that the bone is moderately porous, but not porous enough to break the bone. So all this chronic condition. And then the only group that we study outside this, though it is mostly viewed also as chronic condition would be, we have five, six study on cancer. Now I, I sweep a lot of ground you may not want to cover all, but you can pick what you would like me to cover. Then I speak specifically on them on all these chronic conditions. Well, yeah, thank you for that. I think the fact that that cancer is such a prevalent uh, issue in today's world, um, you know, maybe we can just start with some of the most common cancers and, and maybe we can talk about how that um, how the, you know, your research affects some of the, the most uh, prevalent ones. Okay. The when we did the cancer piece, Josh, we we probably did like fifty or so different cancers in animal study. Then of course we could not do all the clinical trials on it. That's our animal study. So we reduced that to five cancers we decided to do clinical studies on. And they are breast cancer, ovarian cancer particularly for women, and the other three for men and women, pancreatic cancer, the deadliest of all cancer, and then lung cancer, probably because of larger population that smoke, and colon cancer because of sedentary lifestyle. So those are the five clinical trials we did. Currently, we have results of two of them. In mm. the pancreatic cancer done in Florida, my colleague who did that, uh, they show that uh, when they gave tocotrienol to the pancreatic cancer patient, even the lowest dose is able to bring about the cancer cell death, a good sign. And scientists call this apoptosis. The other one is ovarian cancer done in Denmark. And in that study, they are done on stage four cancer patient that they're not have available option left for them. And so they take a standard of care. Then in another group, the standard of care and tocotrienol. And for those who took the tocotrienol, 60% still survive after six months, whereas those on standard of care, none of them were around. So that's quite dramatic in my judgment. You also asked in that question, how does the tocotrienol work? I think of three ways that tocotrienol work uh, to nail cancer like that. One, if you think of cancer, they grow typically like a, they are your normal cells gone wacko. They, uh, uh, they grow like a hundred times, a thousand times faster than your normal cell before they become solid tumor. And when they do that, the cell look like a bean shape and then they have cell wall and the cell wall are mostly cholesterol. So, the tocotrienol inhibit the ability for uh, the cancer to make cholesterol, and without the cholesterol, the cell wall uh, cannot uh, uh, be sustained, and therefore the cancer cannot grow. So it's one way. 
you nail the, the cholesterol production so that the, the cancer cannot grow. Another one would be if the cancer cell grows a, a hundred or a thousand times faster, they are just retooled and rewired. So that means that the signal has gone wacko. So the tocotrienol work to foul up the signal. So they are unable to grow hundred times faster. So this is the second one. You, you dial down the cholesterol, you dial down the signal. And the third one is if they escape these first two, now that tumor is about the size of a quarter inch. That means that it's not a cell. You cannot you can touch it now. It's a little tumor. When they become a tumor like that, they need feeding tubes to feed them. Just think of a dinosaur. So they grow uh, wacko artery, sci-fi almost, into the nearby uh, 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 tube, and then they feed into to the tumor to help it for its voracious growth. So toco try you know, work to cut the, the to cut the arteries out. This kind of growth of artery is called angiogenesis. Anybody can Google. Angio means artery. Genesis means new, growth of new artery. So if you cut the artery, you actually cut the feeding tube that feed the tumor. So if you cut the feeding tube that feed the vor voracious growth of the tumor, then the tumor would die a glorious death. So that's it. So those are the three ways in which it is known for toco you know, to work in cancer. Oh, wow. So, okay. I, again, I like to put myself in the shoes of the, the listener or the viewer. And I imagine already right now, you know, people are going online and probably looking you up and, um, you know, uh, Gordon, the producer here, he can, he can refer to your website and your book and things like that. But w what about vitamin E? Just, you know, like, let's say the average person probably has some kind of multivitamin or supplement that has vitamin E in it. Um, can you maybe discuss some of the differences or the best ways to get tocotrienol or, um, you know, if, if there's something out there that already exists, that's good because, you know, I just want to make sure that we don't have people already starting to throw away their vitamin E thinking that, you know, it's not good enough, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I would say that that's a very good question. If you go out and look at the store or the website on vitamin E, 90% of the time, if not more, will be vitamin E referring to tocopherol. That's one kind of vitamin E, tocopherol, like that. That's not good other than it just as a mild antioxidant. The other one is tocotrienol that you mentioned. That's good. And that would be the remaining 10%. So if you see the vitamin E as tocopherol, ignore that. So on the tocotrienol, now I'm narrowing it on the 10% to help the audience to zone in on the one that you're interested in. I, over the last 40 years of my career, I've only discovered three sources of tocotrienol, natural tocotrienol. One of them is from rice, like in rice bran, and the second one from palm, as in palm oil, and the third one is anato. Anato will look at this beautiful picture like this, like that. You can see the anato. You can see I pretend to touch my hand, the staining here. And the anato color is what you see if you go to Whole Food or Trader Joe to buy a hunk of cheese. That yellowish orangey color is colored by natural color anato. So now you do not want to get toco trienol from palm or from rice because they typically contain, thank you, they typically contain about 25 to 50% tocopherol, the other 50 to 75% toco trienol. Anato, however, it is 100% toco trienol, completely free of tocopherol. You want that because it's the most potent one. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, I did not monkey with this. I did not manipulate with this. The plant makes it like this. I accidentally discovered this. And if you download a copy of my book, when you could, I told the story how I went to South America uh, uh, like that to look. I'll show you one picture on this. You see a younger me. You can <laughs> see a younger me with hair like that. Uh -huh. uh, sorry, younger me with hair. And then... Uh, uh, I was looking for something else on Marigold 
and truth has it about 30 feet away from me, I saw the anato plant, and then I thought, wow, the anato plant, this is also carotin, and carotin are very unstable, so I surmise there must be something very, very potent that blocks it, thank you, that blocks it from, uh, 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 from destroying the color. You know why the plant does this? By the way, the plant never makes stuff for you and I. We're just blessed that we eat plant, you know? If you look at this, right? If you look at this, this, this fruit here doesn't have flesh. Every fruit that you and I eat has a flesh. But if you look, it's a seed, and then the pot is the, is the fruit. And if you touch it, it stains your hand. That means that this plant is deceiving the birds of the air and the frog. I show you an Amazonian tree frog. The frog is smaller than a dime. A and you can see that the seed here is like wow. the grape seed. It deceived the, fro the frogs and the Amazonian uh, a tree bird so that it would swallow the seed whole and poop the seed and procreate. So it conserve energy, not making the flesh. So in order to do that, you have to keep the color good so that it look like a fruit like that. And I was guessing it's probably a polyphenol. Mm. Surprising to me, it is not. It is a vitamin E molecule. Most surprisingly to me, it contains tocotrienol free of tocopherol. Ladies and gentlemen, this to me is a very spiritual thing because I was in South America. Just look at me. I cannot speak a word of Spanish. I'm supposed to go <laughs> to Asia to look for stuff, but that's not where I went. I went to South America and looking for something else. And this tree is staring at me. Look at me, study me. And then I did that. That's 25 years ago, Josh. To me, that's very passionate. I never get old telling this story. So in other words, I was given this as a blessing. I'm not even a medicine man. Just look at a younger me uh, on it. I had hair like that. So I persisted on this. And today, I find this toco trieno. This is the toco trieno you want. So if you look for them, make sure it says anato toco trieno. And then if you wanted to be sure that we make it in Massachusetts, look for the trade name Delta Gold because Delta toco trieno, just say Delta Gold, it come from me. Or it must say anato toco trieno. Then it's free of tocopherol. You got the real active component for which we have done 20 over clinical study and have no problem with uh, with, with, with any uh, tocopherol in it. Wow. <laughs> wow, there's, there, there's so much to unpack unpack there and you know it's like I, I can already feel that this is this is going to be a wonderful conversation and i would i would i'm most certain we're going to have to have you back on to to talk about more of this stuff but um you already addressed one of the questions i was going to ask uh with the color of of the of the seeds and the the plant the fruit um i automatically assumed just because of that deep color that it was it was going to be rich in polyphenols but you addressed that so thank you for that um and one of the other questions I had is, so, you know, like throughout my research in all of this, all you know, just health and wellness in general, um, I, I'm familiar with the term natto, which is more the, the um, like from the soy plant, right? Uh, from soy, but that's different than a natto, right? I just want to make that distinction. Yes, that is true. N natto is a Japanese uh, a word for fermented soy that have lots of vitamin K. So that's natto. This is a natto, A-N-N-A-T-T-O. If you were to go, if you wanted to go to a store to find it, very easy. They're not expensive. You can go online and figure out how to cook with it. Everything will look reddish color. The Spanish word for anato is achote, A-C-U-I-T-E, something you, like that. You do speak Spanish, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> a few words here and there. But when, I'm, when I was in South America, I, 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 I love coffee, so I have to learn how to say uh, a café con leche. Otherwise, I'm going to have problems. <laughs> I can't get my coffee, you know? So, so, uh, uh, and then the British nicknamed this uh, 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 the lipstick plant because of the reddish color. Uh -huh. Now. You, many of your listeners, so listen to this, you're going to love this. Many of your listeners uh, are, are from the greater New York City area. You wouldn't believe this. This plant is grown in the subtropical area and in the tropics, like in Brazil, uh, 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 Peru, all the way to Mexico. 
However, however, in the Bronx Botanical Garden, <laughs> inside the solarium, uh, 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 the planetarium, there is one old anato tree. So if you track the Br Bronx Botanical Garden, ask the botanist, where is your anato plant? Where is your uh, uh, lipstick plant? They'll show you, I went to visit it. So it's inside. It is probably the only anato tree I know inside a planetarium grown because if it were to grow outside like a cold day like today the plant will freeze to death so but it's inside all year round it's an old i was thinking of donating them one so that they have a fresher one this tree is probably more than uh, 30 years old most of this anato tree grows for 20 to 30 years after that uh, uh, it, the, 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 they'll remove that crop but of course in botanical garden they keep them if you were to go to florida you will be able to see them more abundantly because the climate there is warmer perfect <laughs> well, uh, maybe maybe I'll make a trip a trip to the uh, Bronx Botanical Garden because this is not too far from me. I'm here in Harlem, so definitely not too far. Um, so, you know, we're at this point in the show where I I want to do the Pomodoro break, and just for the listeners and viewers, we will go over some uh, some more of the the benefits from um, everything we're talking about. We're going to kind of go through more of that beyond just cancer. Um, but Dr. Tan, what? would you be able to provide um, the, the listeners and the viewers as, uh, as something that would kind of break out from this monotony of either just standing here for long periods of time or sitting for long periods of time? Do you do anything in your own practice that you could offer for others to do to kind of help break up the monotony? Wow, Josh, Th that is actually a brilliant question that you have that I don't have a lot of people asking me. I do this without thinking about this. I I'll tell you first before I tell you what I practice. We have a heart and a heart circulate blood. We call that the arterial system, the artery. And I know you are a very fervent biohacker. This is very simple uh, biohacking. That heart uh, puts out blood to the 30,000 miles of artery. That's easy, easy for most people to understand. For good circulation, for blood work, and no arteriosclerosis, that kind of thing. You know, separate to the artery, we have the lymphatic system. Most people have a hard time uh, figuring this out. The lymphatic system uh, uh, push out liquid like straw color. They don't look red color, and they have no heart to circulate them. And so for me, periodically, particularly winter time, I would do things that help my lymphatic system to circulate because there's no heart. And this is usually what I'll do. I take my chair away and I, I would stand up straight and then I would squat down. I know the screen cannot capture me. If I bend down, I squat down. And mm. then I lift myself up because by squatting down, and lifting myself up, you actually squeeze and help the lymphatic system. So if the listener are watching, just stand up, squat down like that, and then you lift up like that. You know, many Chinese people, they do Tai Chi, and mm. Tai Chi is a way to do this. I know, uh, uh, Mr. Josh, you are a strong athlete because of the clip that you put in the, and I'm looking at your muscle, wow, such an <laughs> elbow thing, you know? <laughs> But, you know, but if to some of your audience, they are not going to be uh, the first first two, three pick. They will be just normal Joe or Joanne like that. Simply doing that. And even for athletes, you'll be surprised by that simple circulation of your lymphatic system. You will have less problem with the cold season. You know why? Because in the lymphatic system is where all your white blood cells, thank you for showing this light. In your lymphatic system, that's where all your white blood cell is. So if you move your lymphatic system like that, with all the white blood cell going through, you actually boost your immune system. Thank you for bringing this mm. up. I would not have thought to share this if you didn't bring it up. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, listen, this is I, I'm having such a great time chatting with you, and and I I this is some of the things that like I told you at the beginning 
whether or not the the listener or the viewer is excited about what we're talking about, I am, right? And so this is very much in line with what I do. And it's obviously, it's very much in line with what you do. In fact, um, just recently, I had another guest on the show and uh, we were talking about the the speed of of doing various exercises. And we we actually did a squat on the on the show, but uh, the guest asked me to do it extremely slow, not just slow, but extremely slow. And what that does and the benefits of that. So if you're if you're if you're curious about more of what we talked about on that show, just kind of tune in onto that episode when it comes out. Um, but I love what you just showed, Dr. Tan. Um, and I hope that Gordon did his squat in the background as well. <laughs> yeah, I did. Good. Um, okay. So as promised, I, I mentioned that after we do the Pomodoro break, we'll kind of discuss more of the benefits, right? So just looking at your website, I see, um, you know, one of the first ones on the website and the benefits is increased life expectancy in cancer patients. So we, we address some of that. Uh, if people want to know more, obviously reach out to either of us and, and we can discuss that. Um, but next you have support cardiovascular health and improve bone health reduce fat in the liver, promote cell health, keep inflammation at bay, up, uphold a healthy blood sugar level, boost brain health, reverse skin damage, and provide radiation protection. Obviously, there's a lot of benefits, right? Yeah. So let's, let's just kind of go through what is probably most important for the listener, because let's keep in mind that most people don't know much about tocotrienols or GG. Okay. I would I would uh, uh, tell it in this way. I will leave the GG and the CoQ10 piece last, but I, I'll, I know we know we, we put so much effort in tocotrienol because I discovered uh, tocotrienol or I started my career with tocotrienol some 40 years ago. So I have a four decades to hone in on, on the tocotrienol. Now, on a tocotrienol piece, initially we found out that it worked with dyslipidemia and then the sugar thing. And then and then, then finally I decided that I was so strong on understanding on this, I decided to do after the cluster of metabolic syndrome called fatty liver disease that actually have bits and pieces of the cardiovascular, cardiometabolic thing that you mentioned like that. Before I do that, I tell you what took me to that direction. About 15 years ago, I went to American Diabetes Association meeting. And there was a famous professor there uh, at Stanford. He has since retired and passed away. He was uh, one of the, he was giving a lecture for an award. There were too many people out there talking. I'm a short Asian guy. I can't get to the front to ask my question. So I waited on the sideline, waiting for him to exit, to catch his flight back to Stanford like that, to to San Francisco, and then I caught him, but he didn't like me to stop him because he was trying to catch his plane, you know? So he said very quickly, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what he said, one sentence, and then he left me, and then I explained it. He said that hypertriglyceridemia always precedes hyperglycemia. Okay, mm. that's what he said, and then he walks away. All that meant was, before you have high sugar, you're going to have high triglyceride in your body. At the time, he was trying to explain what syndrome X was. It was very sexy time because every there were X files this and that doing it in the TV show like that. So after he figured <laughs> it out, he doesn't call synd uh, X, uh, syndrome X, it's become metabolic syndrome. So metabolic syndrome means... You have high triglyceride. If it's not arrested, then you have high sugar. That means that you have diabetes afterward. So we decided to follow through with this. We noticed that the toco you know, consistently lower triglyceride and then sugar. So we decided to study the subset of people with fatty liver disease. You and I would never have guessed after 30 years that a person can abuse their body by consuming so much fat, the liver looks cirrhotic like somebody would have destroyed the liver by alcohol. I said this again, you would not have guessed by eating seriously heavy fat and carbohydrate, you can make the liver cirrhotic like the way alcohol can destroy the liver. Nobody would have guessed that 30 years ago. And this is happening now. 
90 to 100 million people have fatty liver condition. So we decided to grab this study and decided would TOCO try, you know, work on it. First, the liver is the largest solid organ in the body. So we did a three month study. In the three month study, we found success. We did a six month study and, and finally a 12 month study. The whole thing took us seven, eight years to do. In the three month study, we only study uh, uh, liver enzymes. If you go and see a doctor, if the doctor suspects something, they study your liver stress enzyme to see if it comes up. And we notice that the stress, stress enzyme dropped like 20% or so, encourage. Some small things happened on the site, but I didn't pay enough attention. So we published the work. Then we did a six month study. Now we study the stress and everything we study before we continue to study. We study the stress enzyme. We also study is the inflammation reduced. And then we also study the fat in the liver. You can use ultrasound like you trace a, a, a fetus like that. You can track it and the fat was reduced. It's called steptosis. The fat was reduced, inflammation reduced, liver enzyme reduced. Very encouraged. We published that study like that. And, and that side thing still happened. I'll leave it last to tell you. And then we decided with my, my chiefs, uh, uh, my, my technical director here. Let's do a 12 month study. The reason I did that, Josh, was because this is a large single organ. I want it to be sustainable. I don't want to say something that I, I it doesn't hold up for a long time. So I did a 12 month study. In the 12 month study, we did all the things I told you before and we decided to do CAT scan. It will give me a very good solid image to see if there is no fibrosis or reduced fibrosis. When you store too much fat in the liver, there become a scarring tissue fibrosis like that. And if it is, it's considered not for, thank you for, it, it is like this. So we did the 12 month study, everything dropped, inflammation, triglyceride, a liver enzyme, Statosis, which is fat, and then fibrosis. So we got all of those. Now let me tell you the hidden part that I resisted from saying. In the three, six, and 12 month study, this is just like, I, I, I mean, I would not even dare to say this if I don't have the data. They all lose weight. Man, if you have people have fatty liver, losing weight is nothing to sneeze at. Why was I skittish? in not saying a lost weight, because the moment you mumble the stupid phrase weight loss, people are expecting the weight loss to be 30 days. I don't have data for 30 days. My shortest one was three months. So my colleague tell me, well, just say that weight loss was found in three, six and 12 months. So we have that. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have fatty liver condition, please consider this clinical study. We'll share with you and you can get this TOCO try, you know, to see how this would mitigate uh, your liver conditions. Wow. <laughs> I mean, first of all, like I, I, I love that you have all of this research and, and I'm thankful that Gordon is, is pulling up a lot of the imagery here because I want people to not just listen and, and take your word for it or take my word for it, but also to be able to see some of the things that are happening. Um, and, and one of the things that I think about when we talk about fatty liver or, you know, the problem with fat buildup in the body, um, and one of the benefits I noticed with tocotrienols is that it can help to uphold a healthy blood sugar level. And some of the research that I've come across is that, you know, not only is is having too much sugar in the blood in, in, in the blood or in the body a problem, but also these refined seed oils. And so it sounds like it's also helping to mitigate some of that damage because it, it's I, obviously, I, I hope you would agree, um, fat by itself is not bad, right? We actually need healthy fats, but that's the that's the the key word is healthy fats, right? And mm. when 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 fats are in the presence of refined oils and uh, and lots of sugar, that's when we get a lot of these problems, right? And so it sounds like what tocotrienols is doing is is helping to mitigate some of the some of that damage. Yes, on. on you know, Josh, you're fantastic. You know, uh, uh, for the complex of science, uh, you're able to reduce that. It is correct. We do not need more omega uh, uh, sixes. We have plenty too much uh, on the industrial oil. We need more non omega six. Omega uh, uh, three uh, would be uh, uh, fish oil. 
We need that kind of fat. Omega-7, which is olive oil, we can do that. I cook at home with olive oil uh, or <clears throat> a little bit of avocado oil because it's got high smoke point. And then for fish oil, it's good because it helps to vascularize our artery. Now, on the omega-3 oil, that bring another point about that. It's good to have a lot of omega-3. Omega-3, however, is very easy to get oxidized. You just have a hunk of fish. Even if you live in the fridge for a week or so, the fish will go off smell because they oxidize <coughs> omega-3 in the fish. So if you take a lot of omega-3, we need antioxidant to protect the omega-3, and tocotrienol is best able to do that when the omega-3 land onto the cell wall. I don't have time to explain so much on this. <clears throat> Each one of, of us contain about 38 trillion cells, approximating to about 5,000 times the population of the Earth. Think of a cell that look like a bean shape like my mouse here, like that. You have the nucleus here. It make Josh you look like your parent. It make me look like my parent, the DNA here. And then you have the mitochondria here. It gives you the energy so your athlete can pump it up on the ATP and other organelles here. But for the cell to function properly, the cell wall ha had to be intact. I think of the cell wall as a proper gated community where nutrient comes in and the waste it generates goes out. People don't talk like this, but th you cannot have a cell without cell wall. Otherwise, it's not good. So, and then if you have a cell wall, the cell wall must be a proper gated community like that. And what is a cell wall? 80% of the cell wall is fat. Now, if the cell wall contain the bad fat, like you say, industrial fat, no good. If it contain more of the omega-3 good, which means it gated properly, good things go in, the waste go out. And then after you, 80% of the cell wall is fat, the kind of antioxidant that protect those cell wall, they look like vitamin E molecule. Mm. And they don't, Everybody hear too much of the phrase uh, uh, antioxidant, but the kind of antioxidant I care about are the antioxidant that protects the fat. Why do I say that? USDA say that there's three food group, carbohydrate, protein, and fat. Of these three food group, fat is the easiest to get oxidized. If you don't believe me, you drive past on a hot summer day on a roadkill, that smell. If you put a stick of butter, you go out and smell it two hours later. That smell, that's <laughs> oxidized fat. It's really fast to get oxidized. So you need antioxidant that protect that. And tocotrienol vitamin E is the best antioxidant. And since 80% of your cell, well, there's so many, 38 trillion cell. So if you take the tiny molecule that protects your cell, then your cell will function properly. And then the gated community would work well. And that... Here it is. That is biohacking at the simplistic sense in protecting your cell so we'll live healthy life and anti-aging solution. Very simple, not complicated like that. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. In fact, as soon as we get off of here, I am I'm getting <laughs> getting on this. Um, and so of course. Now, you know, I, I, I don't think we've fully exhausted it because obviously there's so much more with everything that you do. But um, I, I want to make sure we have some time to get into Geranil Geranol, uh, however you say that, GG. Um, GG. Let's 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 kind of get into that because I know that that was very important in, in terms of your discoveries and your research as well, especially when it comes to uh, people kind of in my community, which, you know, fitness and, and endurance and and performance, right? Like, I think we can just label it as performance. What is GG? Okay, GG is an endogenous compound. I, I If we end this with the, uh, uh, clinching on this, this will be great for you and I to understand. GG is an endogenous compound. Endogenous means your body makes it. So the, the moment I say that this is endogenous, I don't think you need a rocket scientist. All of us can figure out, okay, Dr. Ten just said GG is endogenous compound. Therefore, why does our body make GG? And what does GG use in our body for? I know of three things our body use GG for. 
GG is used in our body to make CoQ10, and everybody us know what CoQ10 is to give energy. GG is used in our body to make vitamin K, a K2 that builds strong bones and muscle, and athlete needs strong bone and muscle. And then GG directly is used in our body, listen to this carefully, for the synthesis of skeletal muscle protein. In other words, protein that constitute your muscle. A strong athlete like yourself, Josh, probably 35 to 40 percent of your weight is muscle. And then now, this is at your age. Think of your parent and your grandparent and look at them. They have loss of muscle mass and resistive exercise. They are not going to able to kick and fight as, as, as you do, but they need to exercise like that and they lose muscle mass. They lose muscle mass because they don't make enough GG. So GG is required in the body to make CoQ10, MK4, and skeletal muscle. And there may be other things, but I know of, of these three. Then mm. now, let me thank you. Let me specifically say GG in your athlete, in your athlete community. I think of it three way. Nobody who's exercised heavily do not breathe hard. So breathing hard is an example of uh, oxygenation. So I'm going to say systematically and clearly and slowly. And once you got this, then you got this like that on the GG piece and the CoQ10 and the toco trienol piece. We consume a lot of oxygen because we need the oxygen to convert energy and the currency of energy is ATP. You can only do that with CoQ10. CoQ10 convert, you, you take food, you take fat, protein, like a carbohydrate, they convert to ATP. They cannot directly uh, use that. So think of CoQ10 as a spark plug. It fires the engine and then the spark comes out like that. So you need oxygen to do that. So CoQ10 is that piece and GG makes CoQ10. If I move away from the screen, and Gordon can see this. You see in the background, in the foreground, that's a molecule of GG. That is inside your body. In the background is a big albatross molecule of CoQ10. GG is used in your body to make CoQ10. That is brilliant, like that. So if you have, if you take a supplement of GG and CoQ10, we call duoquinol, D-U, because two things, D-U-O-Q-U-I-N-O-L. When you go on our website, you can download all the studies we have. We're doing a clinical trial on this now <clears throat> in Florida. So that's an energy piece. And actually, that would be important. Next. Hmm. If you fire all the oxygen, you will get one of the, just like you get to a campsite, the, 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 the fire is burning and every so often a spark, like that spark off, that is an oxygen go wacko. In your body, it also does that. You don't have to say, oh, I, I want to avoid that. Whether you are breathing slowly or you're breathing heavily, one in about 10,000 spark go wacko. When they go wacko, they will go after a fat and destroy a fat. So you want to quench that spark that go wacko, and toco trienol does that. Hence, toco trienol is an antioxidant. It captures the oxygen that go wacko, so it quench it. So you get the toco trienol piece, and that piece is important for an athlete. So that's the second one. The first one, to get the energy ATP, CoQ10. And when it go wacko, you want the toco trienol to quench it like that. Then the third piece. GG, <clears throat> can you believe this? All this I discovered from the Anato plan. I mean, <laughs> am I grateful or what, you know? And on the GG piece is it. We have an animal study. study. We gave the animal GG and it actually increased the, the, the force power because it grow the muscle and the hind leg of the animal is able to kick faster. So we are trying to do a clinical trial on this. So if I were to be athlete, this is a darling. So the three things again, for your specific community, you want to take CoQ10 for the firing piece to convert ATP because that is the currency of energy. 
for the one in 10,000, the misfire on the spark, you need the toco trino to quench that spark so it will not destroy other parts of your body like that kind of like you want the fire to work well but you got to be careful how to work with fire just like that and the third piece would be the gg piece gg is required in your body for the synthesis uh, of of muscle i am 100 percent sure your athlete know about taurine they know about creatine they know about amino acid big scoop of all of this i am very sure your audience does not know about GG, and GG is an unassuming compound in your body, not even an amino acid, unassuming in compound in your body that makes protein every day. And if I, I don't want to say this in a bragging manner. I want to say this in a way to be grateful. American River Nutrition is the first company in the world making GG, and we make it here right in Massachusetts. Why did I say this gratefully? Because I was grateful that about 25 I years did. ago, I went to South America, I saw this plant, and I was looking for something else, and I was blessed by looking at this plant. I found this thing out, and then I discovered the toco trieno. I still see one to 2% in the bottom part. Hey, what is that yellowish orangey color? I was curious as scientist. And then I thought, oh my goodness, this is the compound GG our body makes. Our body makes this compound in order to make protein CoQ10 and MK4. Then I thought, wow, I, I was planning to retire, Josh. I'm 69 years old like that. Then I said, wait a minute. This GG is very critical and important to us. I, for your community, you want this for performance. I'm also thinking of another community, the community of the elderly, your parents and your grandparents. They're sitting with loss of muscle mass and they are given boost and ensure so heavy in sugar. I wish they take the stupid sugar off. And then, but if I can show this, they can put GG in boost and ensure they take this. They can at least help them to resist muscle mass loss. If I can do that, I would retire. And if someday I would, my eyes would close, I'll pass from this, I'll make a great contribution. I would love that to be the legacy. So I'm, I feel that this is given to me as an enterprise for me to make good with the GG. So maybe another time when I have more clinical trials, I finish, you should definitely come back to interview me on how this improve exercise signs and how this can help the elderly to resist muscle mass loss. So, so thank you so much for allowing me to talk about this. Wow, absolutely. I mean, it, it's like so many things like I, I can easily go down rabbit holes. I'm kind of known for that. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's like so many things are firing in my brain. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of discussion around anti-aging and longevity. And I'm well known for having clients like one of my clients, Roger Waters, is 79 years old. And one of the things that I've been trying to get him to to work through is maintaining muscle mass or building muscle mass, which is much harder as we as we age, right? And so I'm just already thinking, like I'm going to see him soon. Um, we need to get him on this, right? Um, now, the other piece and the other side of all this, right? Because I, I like to play devil's advocate sometimes, but do you know of any contraindications from taking? tocotrienols or GG or, you know, mixing them together with other other vitamins or, or medications. Are, are there any contraindications that you are familiar with at this moment? People, uh, in all the clinical studies we have done with tocotrienol, people have asked me, are they a contraindication? And the scientists and doctors reported none. People had guessed that when you take high vitamin E, they may have clotting problem for people who take uh, uh, blood thinner, for example, like that. So we have people who gone to operation and see how the wound heal, and there's no uh, difference in the wound healing aspect for those who took tocotrienol compared to the one that didn't. So it's on the tocotrienol piece. On the GGPs, 
I would say that it's not intended for uh, 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 the children to take GG because their body make enough. GG is an anti-aging piece. Okay. So somebody who's 30 years old and older, then the GG would come fantastic, uh, fantastically useful for them. The toco trieno, they could take like, if somebody would be 10, 12, 15 years old, but very athletic, then the, the toco, a small amount of toco trieno would work 100, 150. 50 milligram. But with those mild chronic condition, they typically take two to 300 milligram. And then for those with a serious condition in as in a clinical study, three to 400 milligrams, or even four to 600 milligram on, on the toco trinal piece. On the GG, we only make two denomination, 150 and 300 milligram. Those are our two clinical trials now. Oh, by the way, I didn't say that. I might as well let the audience know. In the two clinical trials, first two clinical trials on GG we make are to one, based on the scientific finding. One, one of the ways to increase muscle mass is the increase of testosterone. We do not recommend people to take testosterone directly. So instead, we give them GG. And GG, remember, is an endogenous nutrient. It endogenously help your body to increase testosterone. And then thereby increasing muscle mass. So it's not a, a testosterone itself. How do I know this? This was first discovered by Japanese scientists. And why do Japanese scientists do that? Because Japan have the oldest elderly population. So mm. therefore, we have this study now in Florida to increase testosterone to see if they would increase men and women in their sex drive like that. So it was a, it was an offshoot. Epic. So we will know that study in about a month or two. So you may want to interview me in the first and second quarter. I don't know the data. It is a blinded study until it's reviewed. We don't know. So we gave people 150 and then 300 milligram that study. The second study is done in in Texas. It won't be finished until end of next year. That study is very powerful, also very powerful. Many people take statin drug, Josh. They take statin drug to lower cholesterol. When you take statin drug to lower cholesterol, it also automatically inhibit GG in your body. So when mm. it inhibits GG in your body, you and I know anybody takes statin drug, the CoQ10 drop. But the cardiologist who gives the statin drug is always careful to ask the patient, do you have muscle problem? Isn't that interesting? Do you have muscle problem? Because they inhibit GG. And when they inhibit GG, therefore that thing happened. So we now have people take statin drug to lower cholesterol under a cardiologist's care and running on a medical treadmill. So if they have that, they're going to experience muscle problem. So if they take GG, would that mitigate the muscle problem? If it is, this would benefit 40 to 50 million Americans taking a, a, a taking statin for cholesterol. And by the way, people who take medicine, uh, a statin medicine for cholesterol drop, they doesn't, they do not need to be heavy, overweight people. They can be very skinny people. Mm -hmm. They could be people you're training like that. But genetically, the the body make a lot of cholesterol, so they may be on this. And many people are intolerant to statin because they have muscle problem. So we're going had to had to see this would block it. We won't know the data towards the end of next year on the statin piece. So <laughs> listen, I, I, I can't I can't help but to point out the fact that you have so much energy and vibrancy to you. So you know my, my hope is that you're also taking <laughs> all of this stuff too because if not, my goodness, like what would happen if you did? Um, are, you, are, are, are you taking these products yourself? Yeah, I, I, I thank you for asking. And I don't mind in full disclosure. I'm probably the person that have taken Toco Traino longer than any person living. Today, I take about three, four hundred milligram Toco Traino uh, because uh, uh, <clears throat> Toco try not lower cholesterol a little bit, and I have moderately high uh, 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 cholesterol. I also take GG 
because I take statin drug, my cardiologist make me take statin drug uh, to lower my cholesterol further because I have a scent put into uh, my heart. Why do I have high cholesterol? I have a genetic disposition. I'm not overweight. A, a, a person like that. So I just have a genetic disposition. It, my body makes a lot of cholesterol. So I take statin drug and I take the GG to help not having myopathy, a muscle problem. Mm -hmm. I also take CoQ10. I take CoQ10 because statin drug also inhibit CoQ10 and CoQ10 also help to fire the ATP. So I take these three uh, products. So I'm going to be 70 years old next year and I'm taking the three products my company make the Delta Gold which is Toco Trienol, the GG Gold which is to prevent me uh, uh, from having myopathy and then and then the dual uh, and then the CoQ10 so that I wouldn't have ATP conversion like that and the, if people don't want to take too many we have something called dual quinol and dual quinol is uh, our convert our top of the notch UB quinol CoQ10 the reduced form of CoQ10 plus GG so you you can see this if you go to the website you can download all the paper should your audience have questions they can always ask me hopefully some of you will come to this integrative health symposium is right on your neck of the wood I'll be speaking and you can come to my booth and collect all, all the, the literature would love to pass this on to you and I've been invited by the health integrative health symposium to give a talk this is not a promo they, they actually invited me to give a talk because they feel that i have something to say that the public need to hear including those who are on the elderly population as though as well as those who are on your athlete population this is this is really a brand new day and this is from a plan <laughs> By right. my goodness, this is a vitamin, you know, it's not a drug or anything like that. So it's a blessing. Wow. So really quick, because I mean, this is, I guess, selfish reasons. Um, so it sounds like to get all the things that the top three that you mentioned that you take yourself, if, if a person wanted to reduce the amount of, you know, supplements they're taking or whatever, it sounds like they would do well by by getting uh, the dual quinol, which which has the CoQ10 and the GG, and then it sounds like you still need to get the Toco Trienol. So it would be two products, right? If you want to get all three. Yeah, if you want to get all three, then you don't have to get the GG uh, 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 piece. Yeah, the the I, I would say simplistically, you take the Delta Go Toco Trienol when you live a fast paced and a stressful lifestyle. Please take that because it will help to protect your whole body uh, from any on all your cells throughout your body. So that very simplistic piece. You take the dual quinol because of muscle refurbishment. I call it like that on the GG that is in there. And also the CoQ10 is in there. It help your proper conversion of energy because of ATP. So if you can just take home message on those two, uh, to be, we're entering the end of the year into a new year. If I were to have something to go into the new year to make a fresh start of my life, those would be the two things I do. Dual Quinol and the Delta Go. And you can go, if you want to know where to get them, go to my website, American River Nutrition. We don't make finished product. We make them in bulk, a ton tote like that. So if you go on the website, say buying Toco, uh, Toco Trinol or Dual Quinol, you list all the company and and if you have any question, usually they'll say it made from dual quinol and delta gold, then you know it comes from us. If you have any question, you're uncertain, you can send us an email, we'll confirm if you're taking the real McCoy or not. I love it. Yeah, this is this is very eye-opening. Um, you know, I'm I'm excited to to get on this and you know, like like you said, because it's we're coming up on the end of the year, it's the holiday time, so uh, we may be getting some gifts out to people. <laughs> uh, I, I think people are are used to getting random gifts from me, right? Like either random exercise tools or supplements. So uh, this might be a good one for the uh, stocking suffer. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely love it. So um, obviously, we've we've talked through lots. 
and I'm certain there's going to be, you know, much more to talk through. And I would love to have you on as mu- as many times as you want to come on. Um, but I want to, for today's show, just want to make sure that we didn't leave out anything for today's conversation before we go into our last questions. No, I, I think that this is good. Uh, I, I pretty much touch most of the thing that I have here. Other than to say at the personal level, highly grateful. I'm a scientist in background, but not all of the things in life can be explained by science. And this is one good example. You know, I I went to South America looking for something else, and this is staring at me and said that you got to do something with me. And how blessed could I be, you know, able to speak the language of plant and the plant is giving me the secret of Amazonia to benefit our life. So if there were to be a good way to say this, I I succeeded in biohacking mm. from the plant world into the human world. This is as good as it's ever going to, to get. So you you need a Mo- Nobel Prize, my friend. <laughs> I mean, this is, <laughs> I'm gonna put it out in the ether, okay? Because my goodness, this is amazing. And and not only just for your legacy and and to help others, but but clearly to help yourself as well, right? Like like you're on these products, which is why I asked that question. And I think it's 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 extremely important. It's kind of like well, it's a lot like what I do for myself. Um, people may look at me and think, oh, you know, you buy all these these tools and these supplements and all these, and you're doing all these things, but it's so that I can a help myself to optimize my my overall health and wellness. But then my hope is that anything I do allows others to optimize their health and wellness, right? And so um, what you're doing is beautiful. It's it's incredible. I love Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. So um, one of the last two questions I have is what are your top two pet peeves? What are, what are two things that just kind of get under your skin? And it can be from from any domain, doesn't have to be about, you know, vitamin E or or in anything in science. What are a couple of things that get under your skin? When when I sometimes talk to people uh, about your nutrition and your wellness, people sometimes look at me askew and said that, ah, you're not talking about things that work too much because uh, medicine works well, but you're talking about thing nutrition. You just eat a uh, proper food, then you'll be fine like that. And and there is some slight in the comment. So sometimes that bothers me, and I try not to have it bother me and try to explain to them why it is important to be healthy through nutrition and eat well and exercise well. And not all is the magic bullet of medicine. If you're not well, just take a pill and a pill of the magic bullet would work like that. So that, and then sometimes, those in my own crowd, the second P, they do things and you can tell they'll say things that are more like snake oil. There's not well substantiated. And I, if you were to have a poll on here, on snake oil here, I would be on the other side <laughs> to do things that are well substantiated. So this would truly benefit people. So sometimes I'm bothered by people who make claims uh, that are too snake oil. So those are my two P. And what was mm. the other question that you asked? Yeah, so the, the last question is, what is something you're most grateful for? I think to uh, love others and to be loved. That is such a powerful thing, and it's very spiritual. Uh, uh, I'm a scientist, no question. You know, I do things in the physical, secular world, yes. But you know, in each of our life, there is a place that we can love other people that benefit others and to be loved. And how great is this season to be reminded of that. And even when it's not in this season, it's a very beautiful thing. So I can mm-hmm. tell, Josh, from the way you talk, you have people surrounding around you that are important to you, that matter to you, so that you can do what you do so well. You know, when I saw someone, he said, wow, you're teaching other people, coaching other people how to be good athletes. Bless you, man. But but surrounding you must be people that are very important. And same here. And my family, 
the people that love me and at the same time to give, share some of this to other people. And this, this season, I don't mean it to be a cliche. This season is a great time to share a little bit of brightness to other people who lacks it. So the word, big word is love. That's important and spiritual and from within. Oh, yeah, man, this is <laughs> you, you've got me set for the, you know, the rest of the day and the rest of the week and the rest of the year and the rest of my life. Um, I, I want to wholeheartedly thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your research, your discoveries. Um, you know, I, I, I think that this is one of the most profound interviews I've ever done. And at, mostly because I feel your energy as well coming back. And, you know, if if we can hope to be like you when we get to our later years in life, then, um, you know, I'm going to listen. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. And um, obviously, we're going to list all of the, the websites and your book. And um, are you on social media, Dr. Tan? Yeah, I am. Uh, uh, after you put it up, let us know and we will then link you and maybe you, you, we can broadcast your audience. We do this routinely after you tell us that uh, uh, we can then uh, uh, link your to your broadcast. Yes, we are okay. on the previous one like that. And uh, make sure that uh, Jen, who helped me to put this up, have our contact with you. We would love to, to get connected uh, either during IHS and other times as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I will be um, I'll be in touch. And, and I definitely want to make sure that we connect. Um, also, if there's any sort of, I mean, I know we didn't discuss this beforehand and no pressure whatsoever, but if there's any sort of like discounts or anything like that, um, you know, I'll make sure to list any of that on here. Um, but all in all, I would direct everyone to please go and check out the website, check out all the information that we list to, go and get uh, Dr. Tan's book. And, um, you know, get yourself some some GG, some some CoQ10 and uh, some Toco Trienols because uh, we want you all to live a better life. So, again, thank you to the listeners. Thank you to the followers. I've learned so much on today's show and uh, I look forward to staying in touch and having you back on soon. Peace. Simply walk the talk Walk the talk, talking facts Move like me, but I move a little fast Make my move, here to last Fast in these belts, I'm coming past Take care of me, longevity Hack my biology, better believe Walking the talk, so mind and body connected Better come give us a listen